About 1.7 million Americans and 200,000 Canadians are diagnosed with cancer every year, while about 586,000 Americans and 75,000 Canadians die from the disease annually. Even though cancer is becoming more prevalent, with about 1 in 3 Americans and 1 in 4 Canadians developing some form of the disease in their lives, an effective cure has remained elusive to scientists. While chemotherapy, radiation, and other current treatments can work on some types of cancer, they are often devastating to a patient's health, causing side effects effects like nausea, vomiting, hair loss, pain, organ damage, and even a second cancer. Dr. Grinspoon, his son Danny, suffering from childhood leukemia, had begun chemotherapy. The chemotherapeutics that he had to receive were just devastating to him in terms of the nausea and vomiting. It's a nausea that goes right down to your toenails. I mean, it's, it's really beyond description. Of course, the negative effects of these powerful treatments also need to be relieved, which is typically accomplished using many other potentially dangerous and addictive medications. This has led many cancer patients to using cannabis to find relief from the negative effects of their cancer treatments. My wife, Betsy, uh, she's a rather plucky woman, and next time he came in for his uh, chemotherapy, she went up to the Wellesley High School parking lot and they found his friend uh, Mark uh, and asked him if he, Mrs. Grinspoon, <laughs> wanted a little bit of marijuana. When Dr. Grinspoon showed up for Danny's chemo treatment, he was surprised to find his wife and Danny so relaxed. They were joking and he seemed he was smiling and no problem. Uh, he got on the gurney, had the injection, and whereas before, with this particular chemo, he became nauseous, fell awful right away, uh, and the race to get home before he started to vomit, and then in a bed with a, with a bucket at his side there. He never had any difficulty with nausea and vomiting with the further treatments for as long as he lived. He was free of that anxiety. And I can tell you, it was not only a relief for him, it was a relief for his parents and his siblings. After I got the medical marijuana, it just alleviated so much of that sick, pukey feeling and alleviated the throwing up. Immediately? Immediately. Wow. Immediately. It's like it was a godsend. In the past, anecdotal evidence and patient testimonies showed cannabis to alleviate many symptoms of chemotherapy and radiation. But there are also scientific studies proving this to be true. This has been proven in studies dating back to the 1970s. So people who are getting chemotherapy, for example, uh, can take this to try and prevent the nausea associated with that. In 2011, a University of Alberta study found that cannabis can greatly improve the lives of cancer sufferers by increasing appetite and alleviating nausea. The medical marijuana saved my life. I couldn't eat anything, couldn't swallow, and I think it just saved, I just think it saved my life. Every day I see patients with cancer who have nausea from their chemotherapy or their cancer, loss of appetite, pain, depression, insomnia, and my experience over the past 30 years of being an oncologist is that there's one medicine that I could recommend to patients that can take care of all of those problems. Instead of writing five different prescription drugs, all of which have side effects and addictive potential, uh, I can tell my cancer patients to try marijuana uh, to take care of any combination of those symptoms. It is far and away the best medication that we have for chronic wasting and for increasing appetite in cancer patients. There's probably nothing that works as well for appetite stimulation that we have as, as marijuana. While using cannabis may seem counterintuitive for cancer patients, a 2012 study by researchers at the University of California and the University of Alabama found that cannabis use doesn't harm the lungs, unlike tobacco. The study was conducted over 20 years and included more than 5,100 participants aged 18 to 30. We actually measured lung function every year in uh, our marijuana smokers up, up to eight years. And we found that the slope of the decline in lung function was almost identical in the marijuana-only smokers compared to the non-smokers where it was accelerated in the tobacco smokers. So just one other 
piece of evidence that uh, marijuana is not a risk factor for the development of COPD. I think I'm convinced of that. Similarly, the American Association for Cancer Research analyzed six case control studies involving more than 5,000 participants over 14 years. They concluded that there is no risk of lung cancer from smoking cannabis, regardless of dosage. A 2006 lung cancer study funded by the National Institute on Drug Abuse unexpectedly found that chronic, heavy marijuana smokers not only had no increased risk of developing lung cancer, but they actually had a decreased risk. Furthermore, a study of 2,000 people by the University of California found that cannabis does not cause lung, head, or neck cancers, while a study by scientists at the University of Michigan, UCLA, Yeshiva University, and the University of California suggests that even long-term heavy cannabis use does not cause cancer. The largest study uh, ever conducted on this subject was very well designed. We used the U uh, Los Angeles uh, Tumor Registry to identify, rapidly ascertain all the cases of lung cancer and head and neck cancer <clears throat> that occur, that were diagnosed in the LA County system. Then we matched them to controls, the uh, same age, socioeconomic status, that lived in the same neighborhood using an algorithm that USC developed. Any category of cannabis use, including heavy use, the ratio was less than one, meaning reduced risk. It wasn't significantly reduced, but it was reduced. Not only does cannabis not cause cancer and other tobacco-related diseases, scientists have found that the cannabinoids in cannabis, like THC and cannabidiol, or CBD, can shrink tumors, stop cancers from spreading, and even kill cancerous cells. Seven-year-old Michaela Comstock has an aggressive form of leukemia. Michaela is a registered medical marijuana patient. Her mom gives her the drug every day. So some say that the marijuana helped kind of cure yeah. her leukemia. Is well, that possible? <laughs> very early studies on mice in Israel, Spain, and the United States are now showing the potential of marijuana to kill cancer cells. THC actually has an anti-tumoral effect. This occurs via the endocannabinoid system, named for the plant that led to its discovery. My name is Cristina Sanchez, and I work at Complutense University in Madrid, Spain and I have been working for the last decade on the anti-tumor effects of cannabinoids. In the 1980s, two specific targets for THC were discovered, something that we call cannabinoid receptors. And after the discovery of the receptor, it was obvious that our body has to synthesize something that binds to these receptors. It was pretty obvious that it was something endogenously produced, produced by our own bodies, that was acting through these receptors. And these compounds, these endogenously produced cannabinoids, were found a few years later, and it's what we call the endocannabinoids, because they are produced endogenously inside our bodies. These compounds, the endocannabinoids, together with the receptors, and the enzymes that synthesize, that produce the endocannabinoids and that degrade the endocannabinoids are what we call the endocannabinoid system. And we now know that the endocannabinoid system regulates a lot of biological function. Appetite, food intake, motor behavior, reproduction, and many, many other functions. And that's why the plant has such a wide therapeutic potential. This anti-cancer effect is demonstrated in many published studies. For example, multiple studies by researchers in Spain concluded that THC inhibits brain tumor growth and kills cancer. We were working with astrocytes at the time, and we decided to change the model and work with astrocytoma cells, the tumoral cells. And we observed that when we treated these cells with cannabinoids, uh, THC, the main psychoactive component of cannabis, it was killing the cells in our petri dishes. We were killing the cells. So we thought that we were facing some potential anti-tumoral responses. And then we decided to analyze these compounds in animal models of breast and brain tumors. We started to do experiments in animal models of glioblastoma, brain tumors, and we observed that they were, cannabinoids were very potent in reducing tumor growth.
cells can die in different ways and after cannabinoid treatment they were dying in the clean way. They were committing suicide. One of the advantages of cannabinoids or cannabinoids, cannabinoid based medicines would be that they target specifically uh, tumor cells. They do not have any toxic effect on normal non-tumoral cells. And this is uh, an advantage with respect of standard chemotherapy that target basically everything. Furthermore, researchers at the University of Inserbia in Italy found that CBD has an anti-tumor effect, while separate studies from scientists at Harvard University, Ohio State University, and the University of Rostock in Germany found that THC and other cannabinoids cut lung cancer tumor growth in half and significantly reduce the ability of the cancer to spread. Dr. Prakash Nayagarkati is a professor of pathology and microbiology at the University of South Carolina. And so basically telling the cells basically to commit suicide and that's what they do and uh, we demonstrated that that would be the mechanism by which in the cannabinoids can kill the cancer and therefore it can be used effectively as an anti-cancer agent. Because of the large number of endocannabinoids and their receptors found throughout the human body, many types of cancer can potentially be cured by the chemicals in cannabis. Lung cancer, breast cancer, thyroid cancer, prostate cancer, gliomas, brain cancer, that the development and growth, or the growth actually of the tumor is, is suppressed by THC and metastases are also suppressed. So how can that be? Well, THC impairs protein synthesis, and it's what we call anti-mitogenic or anti-proliferative. You need, so tumor cells don't as readily proliferate in the presence of THC. They're also uh, anti-angiogenic, so they interfere with the growth and development of new blood vessels that are necessary for metastatic spread. And they also are pro-apoptotic. What is apoptosis? Apoptosis is program cell death. So when cells age, there is a mechanism whereby the cells die. Uh, it's a non-necrotic death. They die off the old cells and the, we get rid of them before they have an opportunity to develop mutations that would lead to cancer. So enhancing apoptosis diminishes the risk of the cells becoming cancerous. So marijuana it turns out, THC rather, it turns out to be pro-apoptotic. So those appear to be the mechanisms that might account for these anti-tumoral effects of THC. For example, according to multiple studies by scientists in Italy, Spain, California, and the UK, CBD kills breast cancer cells and significantly reduces the size of tumors. Cannabidiol was particularly effective at inhibiting aggressive breast cancers. First, scientists at California Pacific Medical Center discovered a key gene which enables breast cancer to spread. Then they tested the pot compound and realized it could actually inhibit that gene's destructive path and stop the spread of tumor cells and potentially do it without harming a patient. We know that this compound extracted from cannabis is non-toxic in patients because it has already been used for different kind of disease. The benefits may not stop there. Scientists say the cannabis compound may fight other aggressive cancers, including prostate cancer. Likewise, in 2005, researchers at the University of Wisconsin demonstrated that cannabinoids can kill prostate cancer. Cancer. In 2013, an article published in the British Journal of Pharmacology concurred. Additionally, in 2008, a study by researchers in Sweden concluded that cannabinoids can kill blood cancers, like non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In 2013, scientists at the University of London found that cannabinoids kill cancerous cells found in people with leukemia. It is pretty obvious, not only from our work, but from work from many other researchers that the plant has a very wide therapeutic potential. If the previous studies weren't enough proof that cannabis can kill many types of cancer cells, a study by researchers at the State University of New York determined that cannabinoids are toxic to oral cancers, and researchers at Alcala University in Madrid, Spain found that cannabinoids inhibit the growth of liver cancer. There are also studies showing that cannabinoids can treat skin, colorectal, ovarian, bladder, and other types of cancers. Medical marijuana has grown to a point where where the government looks foolish 
saying it's not a medicine. It is a medicine. Even with decades of evidence proving that THC, CBD, and other cannabinoids found in cannabis kill cancer, the majority of the medical community and society in general dismiss the possibility. To make it worse, the US government, including the DEA and FDA, as well as other nations, corporations, and special interest groups, are actively hindering this scientific breakthrough that could save millions of lives. If we can do something for people, why not do it? If something can help somebody, why not let those people have it? We who are involved in the science sort of wish that science would become more of a dominant driver in the, in the messaging, as opposed to politics, religion, and, and ignorance and fear. To ensure that cannabinoids can be used as a viable cancer treatment, cannabis laws need to be reformed so that more human trials can take place. I never want to see compromised the capacity of people to use herbal marijuana, whether it's because the drug that they've come up with is much more expensive, or it doesn't do as well, or whatever the reason, that people should always have herbal marijuana available to them without any constraints from the law. With more research into cannabis, scientists can determine the proper doses of cannabinoids and how the life-saving chemicals should be administered to cancer patients effectively. Life